guys, Blu-ray Josh back with another video. I'm going to show you my Blu-ray uh, pickups for the month of February. Um, excuse me if I'm talking a little bit quietly, but my daughter is ill, um, asleep in bed in the bedroom just behind me. So I've got a little window of opportunity to uh, show you my pickups for this month. Um, obviously it's not quite the end of the month yet, but I probably won't be picking up anything else. Sorry about that. Um, and that, sorry. <laughs> I probably won't be picking up anything else this month. Uh, I'm a bit strapped cash as well. So anyway, it was my birthday this month, so I did get you know quite a, quite a few uh, Blu-rays as gifts and also vouchers, which were actually spent on Amazon, and various other places. But anyway, um, I'll show you the films that I have seen, and then I'll show you the films I haven't seen. So first up, um, I'll probably well, I may as well show you these two together. Um, first one is Fish Tank, and the second one is American Honey. So um, these ones are directed by the same same director, which is Andrea Arnold. Um, she's a British director, and this was well, this one she released before American Honey, um, but this one really, really did blow me away. Um, I mean, it's got Michael Fassbender in it, which he's uh, you know really talented actor as well, and the actress in this one. Um, it's actually an interesting story actually on both of these films of how they were cast. She was um, she was found having an argument with a boyfriend at train station. Was asked to be in a film, and then um, Sasha Lane in America and Honey. I think she was just approached on the beach and was asked if she wanted to be in the film. But anyway, quite interesting how both the main characters and both of her films weren't you know trained actresses, um, but they were both really good performances from both of them. So um, I preferred Fish Tank to American Honey, but I'm going to have to give American Honey another watch. It is quite a long run time on this one, um, but Fish Tank really did blow me away. I definitely give this one five stars. Um, it it was just so raw um, and just amazing. So anyway, that's Fish Tank and American Honey. Okay, next one. Uh, so I did own on DVD before I, you know, obviously went over um, to Blu-rays, and that's the guest. Um, he has a pretty decent um you know action thriller from what i remember um but i found it cheap on ebay just thought i'd pick it up and give it another watch at some time so that's the guest okay one that i uh, picked up with some uh voucher vouchers which i got for my birthday and that's dead poet society um took me a little while to get into this one um however if you are going to check it out, watch it to the end. It's fantastic. Uh, Robin Williams is um, probably one of my all-time favourite actors. Maybe not quite number one, but he's definitely in the list. Um, he gives an amazing performance in this. Um, yeah, and it just it's a real... Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a bit of a tearjerker at the end, so that's Dead Poet Society. Okay, another one which is a, definitely a tearjerker and one that I completely forgotten about um, until I, what did I see the day with Will Smith? Anyway, something reminded me about Will Smith, um, so I definitely had to pick up The Pursuit of Happiness, which I haven't seen for a long, long time, but you've probably all seen this. Will Smith is absolutely outstanding in this film. Um, some people slate this film, but I really enjoy it. It's quite depressing, but awesome, so glad to have that in the collection. Okay, one of the all-time greats, and that's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest uh, with Jack Nicholson. Um, again, you've probably all seen this one, so I don't really need to explain much. Um, but starting to add um, a couple more um, Academy Award winners to the collection. Obviously, the Oscars is tonight. Um, but yeah, this is, this is just one of my all-time favourite classic films. Um, Jack Nicholson is um, a criminal convict. He was in prison, so he pretends that he has a mental illness, so he gets transferred to this mental institution and the story goes on. But anyway, it's really, really good. So that's one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Okay, another one which um, I picked up with some um, birthday money, and that's Louder Than Bombs. I didn't know much about this one before I picked it up. I just knew that Jesse Eisenberg was in it. I did watch the trailer. It looked pretty interesting. Gave this a watch a couple of nights ago, and I still don't really know what to think of it. Um, you know, it is slow paced, 
Um, it's about a family who they lost their mum and I suppose it's about how their struggles and how they'd come to, come to terms with it you know, later on down the line. Um, good performances all around. The score was like really minimalistic uh, but pretty decent and um, the direction in it also had you know, stiff snippets of um, of greatness so I think this is the first um, film by this director, you know, first um, English language film so yeah it's a pretty decent debut by him. That's Louder Than Bombs. Okay another all-time classic of mine when I was younger and that's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Um, <coughs> Gene Wilder. I prefer this one hundred times more than um, the Johnny Depp remake, um, and my daughter absolutely loved it as well. So the singing and dancing, she loves seeing all the sweets and the chocolates, and obviously so do I. But anyway, that's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Okay, another one which I did um, actually own on Blu-ray, um, but for some reason um, sold it. But I found this cheap new brand new sealed and that's into the wild and I was just getting into film when I first watched this um, and I don't think I appreciated it as much as I should have but anyway that's into the wild and I'm definitely going to give this one a little rewatch um, and I don't think I knew it was a true story when I watched it first time around so it's probably going to change my uh, opinion on this so that's into the wild okay another one which I oh well I did own on DVD, but never actually got around to picking up the Blu-ray, and that's her with Joaquin Phoenix, um, and he um, he falls in love with uh, operating system, so it's a really original um, you know concept, and the perform but the performances are awesome, and um, just yeah, it's just a really interesting plot. So that's her. Okay, the perks of being a wallflower watch this one it's just one of the best coming of age films ever and um, a really strong um, story about mental illness as well um, great performances by the three main characters um, and I just really really enjoyed it so that's Perks of Being a Wallflower okay one that I did get for my birthday and that's Sexy Beats that uh, Sexy Beast um, of Way Winston and uh, Ben Kingsley. I think it's probably the best performance I've ever seen by Ben Kingsley. Um, it's a fantastic film and he's like um, Ray Winston's character, now lives in Spain and he was a bit of a bank robber I think before. And Ben Kingsley tries to get him out of retirement to come and do a job and it's really interesting. Um, uh, so I think it's quite un underrated and un overlooked. So um, that's Sexy Beast, so check it out. Okay, um, uh, I've got a Coen Brothers film and that's right, uh, Rising Arizona. Um, yeah, it's pretty enjoyable. Um, not their best film, by no means. Um, their favourite film of mine by them is um, The Big Lebowski. This is not on that level, but it's, you know, it has its funny moments. Um, Nick Cage is awesome in it, and obviously John Goodman as well. Um, but yeah, it's about... Um, you know, a convict it gets married to a police officer and they want a baby, so they steal one, and that's how it goes. Um, but yeah, it's pretty enjoyable and one that I will obviously give a rewatch at some point in the future. So that's Raising Arizona. Okay, on the cuff, oh, yeah, off the cuffs of watching um, Sing Street, um, I didn't realize that. The, the, the director had a film out before he released Sing Street and that's Begin Again and my god this was as good as Sing Street in my opinion um, you know Kira Knightley, Mark Ruffalo um, Adam Levine James Corden, great cast, great music great story um, great acting, uh, Kira Knightley annoys me a little bit in, in the way that she acts, she's, I think she keeps her mouth open too long um, however that didn't put me off liking this film and um you know, I'm actually getting into these kind of things. I didn't think I'd like it by reading the back, but after seeing Sing Street, I definitely have to check this one out. So let's begin again. Okay, one that you've already know that I picked up this month, and that's Deepwater Horizon. 
Uh, brilliant film, tense, thrilling, true story, great acting, great action, Deepwater Horizon. Okay, um, another slow moving movie, but enjoyable, the same, that's Lost in Translation. One that I hadn't seen and it was just a, a first time watched a couple of nights ago. Um, Bill Murray, uh, Scarlett Johansson. Um, they um, befriend each other when they are in um, Tokyo, I believe. And it's just interesting how their relationship forms and how their relationship helps each other understand life a little bit more. But yeah, it's, um, it's like I said, it's a pretty slow paced movie. Not much happens, but if you can look past that and look into you know, the true meaning of this film, then uh, it is pretty enjoyable. So that's Lost in Translation. <clears throat> okay, this one I believe I forgot to show you on the last update and it's the only still book I've got here and that's Rush. Um, an enjoyable film about uh, the rivalry between Nicky Lauder and James Hunt, you know, back in the day of Formula One racing. Um, directed by Ron Howard, starring Chris Hemsworth and I can't remember the other guy's name, but um, yeah, if you like Formula One, definitely check this one out. Uh, the still book's pretty nice and glossy. And you've got the writing boss here. Nice gloss red finish. So that's Rush. Okay, and the last film, well, it's not really a film, but the last pickup that I've got that I have seen, and that's This Is England, um, the complete series. So you've got 86, 88, and 90. These are the best TV shows I've ever seen. No joke. I've watched them one after after another. You know, they're only small mini series. There's only about three or four episodes on each series, following on from um, the This Is England film. But Shane Meadows is just such an awesome director. He should definitely do some more stuff. I think he's got a film called Dead Man's Shoes, which I need to check out. Um, but pff, guys, this is this is phenomenal. This is these are great. So check it out guys, this is England. Okay, so to the films that um, I have not seen yet, and I don't usually pick up DVDs, but I did, and I picked up a Before Sunset and Before Sunrise double pack. Um, I've not seen these ones before. Um, I know they're releasing a Criterion later this month in the US obviously, but I, you know, I was thinking about picking them up. I do have a region free player, so yeah, directed by Richard Linklater. He directed Boyhood, Days and Fuse. Um, what has he done? Everybody wants um, a couple others. Um, but yeah, I don't really know what they're about, but I'm excited to check these out before I potentially buy them on Criterion. Okay, another one I picked up for my birthday, and that's The Magnificent Seven. Um, you know, a remake. It's got a pretty decent cast, and I like the director. Um, directs, you know, Training Day and um, Southpaw and The Equalizer. So, yeah, um, apparently it's pretty enjoyable. So, yeah, excited to check that one out. Magnificent Seven. Okay, this one is a Swedish import, I believe, Nordic release. Um, that's Atonement. Yeah, Atonement with James McAvoy and again Kira Knightley. Um, not sure what it was about. Um, I think probably he gets accused of something he didn't do, and that's all I know. So um, yeah, I think James McAvoy is a pretty decent actor, um, and I'm not too sure if this was nominated for something as well back in the day. But anyway, that's Atonement. Okay, another one that I picked up cheap on eBay, and that's the Thin Red Line. Definitely want to check this one out. It looks like it's got an awesome cast, um, a great director, and um, yeah, I just want to watch a couple more war films. Really, I mean, I have seen a lot, but there's a couple like this and the Pockets now that I haven't seen, so I should definitely try and get around to watching those one day. I do have the Pockets now up there somewhere, um, but yeah, the Thin Red Line. Okay, freaky story about this. Um, that's a graduate. So my next door neighbour actually had the graduate and um, when I got home from work one day it was the graduate was there on the kitchen table DVD format and then I had some posters that, uh, the same day as well 
and I had the graduate, so how, how creepy that he lent it to me to say, you should definitely check this film out. And I'd actually ordered it and it arrived on the same day, but anyway. Um, you know, it's an old film, it's got Dustin Hoffman, and um, yeah, I'm just excited to, to watch this one. So let me know if you've seen The Graduate. They see a lot of people have you know, said it's um, in their top films of all time I've seen on, on Letterbox and stuff. So that's The Graduate. Okay, foreign language film that I picked up. Again, um, a, lot of, a lot of you on, on Letterbox and um, online and that are saying that. This is in their you know, top 50 of all time, and that's the blue is the warmest colour. Um, I think it's a bit of a lesbian movie, but um, like a lesbian love story. Um, but that's all I really know, so it's a pretty long, long time, but I'll watch it at some point. That's blue is the warmest colour. Okay, I got this one for quid on eBay, and that's Michael Fassbender in uh, Shame. I know he has a sex addiction. And there's something about that. However, I've not seen it, so that's shame. Okay, a couple here that you're probably surprised I haven't seen. That's Predator. Um, heard so much about this, seen so many clips of it, but not actually sat down and watched the film. Um, so I bought this with some Amazon vouchers I had. So yeah, Predator. Get to the chopper. Is the line out of it. Um, another one that I haven't seen, and this was bought by, um, you know, given to me as a gift by uh, Annabelle's brother John. He said, "Have you seen Gangs in New York?" And I said, "No." So he bought it for me for my birthday. So thank you very much. Starring uh, Leonardo, who is my favourite actor of all time. Daniel Day Lewis was obviously awesome, and uh, Martin Scorsese, who is definitely in my all-time favourite directors. So that's Gangs in New York, and probably the only. Not the only Scorsese film I haven't seen, but one of many that I haven't seen. So, anyway, another one, another foreign language film. That's Pan's Labyrinth, uh, directed by Del Toro. Um, I have no idea what it was about. It looks like quite fairy tale-y, but obviously not for kids because it's rated 15. So, um, yeah, that's Pan's Labyrinth. And uh, lastly, one that I was bought as a gift, and I probably wouldn't. Have you know, got this by choice, but that's Mechanic Resurrection. I heard it's got terrible reviews. I do like Jason Statham. Did quite enjoy the first one, um, but wouldn't have been too bothered if I never watched this, but I will watch it. Obviously, I got given as a gift. Um, and perhaps um, if I have a couple of the boys around, we can watch this together. It's like a bit of an action, action night with a couple of beers. So that's Mechanic Resurrection. Anyway. That is everything. But, oh, I also picked up uh, the La La Land um, soundtrack from the film. Um, love this film, probably in my top two films of last year. Um, brilliant, awesome. I pre-ordered the Steelbook, so can't wait for that one to come. Oh, and also picked up new Funko Pop, The Dude from The Big Lebowski. So that's pretty decent little Funko there. So after the shelf. I'll probably show you, I'll do another video shortly, um, show you my setup here and show you my different figures and fungos and hot toys and stuff as well. If you guys would like to see that, leave a comment down below. And before I go, I will just tell you an interesting story um, about who I met yesterday. And I had no idea who it was when he turned up, but my next door neighbor had a friend around for lunch and it turns out that it was um, Menno Maez, who um, is a film director, and um, he works closely with Steven, St uh, Steven Spielberg. Um, he wrote, um, or co-wrote, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade with George Lucas. He also wrote um, The Colour Purple for Steven Spielberg, and he directed, um, well, he's directed a couple of films, but one most notably is uh, Max, which is a film about Hitler, um, which stars John Cusack. Um, but yeah, I wish I had some footage to show you, um, but and I wish I had more time to speak to him because I didn't realise who he was until he was leaving, so I literally just briefly met him. But yeah, he seemed like a really interesting guy, and I just wish I had more time to you know meet him. But he's a friend of um, our 
next door neighbour and landlord. So, uh, crazy. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Um, you know, that I really appreciate that if you could do that. Um, but yeah, hope you like this update. Let me know what you thought of my pickups, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you, bye.